priest is, has infringed human rights. That is what I understand the, the cases are all about. But I don't know the details of what exactly uh, the charges are. Sorry, I can't help you there. But I think we'll know in due course. Probably we'll get more. The news will filter through sometime. Yes? Well, he didn't entrust them with the pure lineage. He entrusted both the lay people and the priesthood with the pure lineage. And he, that's very clear in the Gosha. Uh, uh, but he also uh, stated what a priest should be, as I say, uh, the qualities of a, that a priest should be. And uh, in quite a natural way, because of the function of a priest, and the function of the lay person being so different, hmm? therefore it was natural in a way that the priest should particularly be responsible for maintaining the correctness of the teachings. This was a logical thing for a priest to do because he was there sitting in a temple surrounded by books uh, all day, whereas the lay person is carrying on with his ordinary secular life. Uh, but in fact, Nitra and Daishonin entrusted both, both the lay people and the priests, to uh, practice their faith correctly. The Gosho were addressed mostly, in fact, to lay people. Uh, some were addressed to priests, but mostly to lay people. So this is the important point about this Buddhism, that Nitra Daishonin treated the lay people and the priests absolutely equally and made very clear that all were, were equal and that there was, should be no discrimination between uh, man or woman or lay person or priest. Uh, but this is the way the influences, the historical influences have corrupted the priests and placed them on a pedestal, as it were, on a level higher than the ordinary people. Do you follow? Does that answer satis satisfy you? Because we have direct access to the Gosha, which, uh, as you heard this morning, prior to Mr. Toda, that wasn't the case. The lay people did not have direct access, but now we have. So, of course, there are very great people uh, in terms of the study of the Gosha amongst the lay people now, as well as the priests. So, yes, we are equipped. And uh, I often wonder whether we might end up with some sort of debate, but I don't think the priests would do it because uh, they have never tried to uh, uh, state categorically uh, evidence from the Gosho that what they're doing and saying and acting is right by Nitra and Daishonin's teachings. They've always refused to do it so far. Yes. A lot of questions. Right? Right. I hear the word... Sorry, 23. Yeah? I hear the word Ichinen mentioned quite a lot, mostly to do with determinations. Where does Ichinen come from? Is it one of the ten worlds? And how can I summon forth my own Ichinen? Ah, that's great. Shall we repeat it again? I hear the word Ichinen mentioned quite a lot, mostly to do with determinations. Where does Ichinen come from? Is it one of the ten worlds? And how can I summon forth my own Ichinen? Well, the word Ichinen, uh, it, it is a, um, a, a Chinese word originally, or a Chinese character. Uh, and then it became used by the Japanese. But in terms of Nichiren Daishonin's Buddhism, it is central uh, to the principle of Ichinen Sanzen. Ichinen Sanzen. 3,000 states of life in one moment of existence.
Jesus, right? So, uh, what is this Ichin and Sanzen? Ichin and Sanzen is an explanation of the incredible power which one individual human being has in terms of uh, influencing the environment. Of course, that influence could be for the worse or for the better. But nevertheless, uh, the power of each individual is tremendous. So in the theory of Ichinen Sanzen, Ichinen meaning uh, that single moment of life, right? What the principle is teaching is that at any given moment, whatever your state of life is, is expressed with colossal power uh, from your Ichinen, right? Your Ichinen meaning the, the desire or wish or determination which is central in your life, which is uh, another way of putting it loosely, is in your heart. Hmm? The very core of your life. So, uh, the, the theory of Ichin and Sanzen sounds complicated, but it isn't. So, uh, let me just try and explain it to you very briefly. Uh, as you know, Buddhism... Uh, teaches the existence of ten states of life, right? And we all know they begin with hell and end with Buddhahood, but we enter into those states in a higgledy-piggledy way. The first six, hell, hunger, anger, animality, tranquility, and rapture, we move into those worlds through influences from outside us. And then the last four, higher worlds as they're called, uh, that is to say, learning, partial uh, enlightenment or partial realization, bodhisattva and Buddhahood, they're called higher worlds because we have to make effort to get into them. Right? So those uh, ten worlds, we are then taught, each possess the ten worlds within them. So in other words, even for a person at the moment in the state of hell, Buddhahood still exists in them, potentially. So does anger, hunger, learning, and all the rest of the ten. And likewise, if you, even the Buddha uh, has hell, hunger, anger, and so on within him or her. Hmm? So, uh, of course, the significance of that is that... Uh, a Buddha is a human being. He has the other nine worlds in him. But because he's activated his Buddhahood, he can turn all those other life states from their negative aspect to their positive aspect. So an example often used is, is because it's easily understandable, is anger, which can be turned into powerful passion. Uh, for peace or whatever the subject is. So, ten worlds by the ten, multiplied by the ten that are within each of those worlds makes a hundred. Hmm? And uh, whatever life state you're in of those ten, they're expressed through what are known as the ten factors. The ten factors uh, if I can get them in their right order and remember them all, are uh, first of all, uh, you will express that life state in your physical appearance, in your spiritual inner realm, and also uh, you will express it uh, at the very heart and core of your life. Your whole life, therefore, will be expressing that world of anger or whatever you may be in. And uh, then the next is influence. That, that next state of life will then have influence to everything around you as well as within yourself, right? And that influence has power, which is the next factor, right? A powerful influence on your environment. 
and again within yourself. So if you go into an office and you're really fuming with anger, it'll affect everybody powerfully. They may resent it tremendously. You may make them angry too and so on. So it's influence and power. And then uh, the next one is through that influence and power of that life state, you will m make an inherent cause which will become in due course uh, an external cause or manifest cause, right? Deep down in your life, you make a cause because of that life state. And inevitably, that will create an action which is on the surface of life, right? That's the, the manifest cause. And the manifest cause, that action on the surface of life, will then inevitably, uh, because of the simultaneousness or simultaneity of cause and effect, the moment you make that manifest cause, you are establishing an inherent effect. Lodged deep in your life, and deep in another person's life, both, you are creating an inherent effect which will live on until the time and circumstances are right for that inherent effect to become a manifest effect. Hmm? So all that process of inherent cause, manifest cause, inherent effect, manifest effect, right the way through, what is ha it is your life state in that moment which is proceeding through that process, do you understand? The causes and effects are as a result of that anger or whatever life state you're in. And then finally, uh, uh, we say when we're reciting this in Gongyo, Honma Kukyoto, or actually that's short for Honmatsu Kukyoto, right? So, nyoze so, nyoze sho, nyoze tai, nyoze riki, right? And so on. Nyoze sa, nyoze in, nyoze en, nyoze ho, nyoze homma kukyoto, right? Homma kukyoto is consistency from beginning to end. So, oh, I've left something out. Sorry. Uh, so, those ten factors make a thousand, right? Multiply the hundred, world within worlds, by ten factors, that's a thousand. And that in turn uh, totally affects the three realms, which are the realm of yourself, your inner self that is, the realm of your environment or society that exists around you, and the realm of the land on which you are living and others are living who surround you. So in other words, the influence is colossal. We can't of course see this or even feel this consciously, but what this theory uh, called Ichinin Sanzen is teaching is that your influence as a human being is unbelievably enormous, though we often can't believe that. And the most important point, of course, in this theory of Ichinin Sanzen is that if through this practice you activate your Buddha state, then it is your Buddha state which is expressing itself in those 3,000 different ways uh, through the 10 factors every moment of your life. This is an extraordinary thought. So Ichinen is unbelievably powerful, that life moment in which you express your life at that point in time. Do you follow? So uh, uh, Ichinen, in other words, is or should be, should be if you're really practicing and always trying to advance your life your ichinen will contain tremendous determinations this is why in buddhism we always talk about targets the value of having targets you achieve one target and then you start to make your next target because those targets help to concentrate our ichinen where we want to get to I've gone talking for a long time about this. But I just say one other thing, because it is an important related uh, principle. 
By the way, I should have said also, of course, that you then link Ichin and Sanzen, links with that other principle of the inseparability of one's self and one's environment. In other words, if your life is in the Buddha state, then the environment will react back to you in the Buddha state. Not consciously, of course, but it will. If you're angry, then your environment will act back to you, reflect back to you that anger. Hmm? So, uh, the important thing is to have one's Ishinen in the right life state. And then it's Buddhahood that will be reflected back to you. This is uh, the incredible importance, really, of regular practice. Because if we do practice regularly and manage to sustain it, we sustain the workings of our Buddha state. And that is what is existing at the heart of our lives, or in the Ichinen of our lives. So Ichinen is enormously powerful. Okay, everybody, can you sort of understand that? Great. Well, I wanted to just mention one more point. It, it'll take me another five minutes. Is it all right? Just very quickly, because it relates to Ichinen Sunset. There is, a, there is a, 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 a principle which is called Kyo, this is in characters, right? Kyo, Chi, Gyo, G-Y-O, and E. E is just the letter I. Kyo, Chi, Gyo, E. So, Kyo is your ultimate aim. Right? And Chi is each one of you with uh, the wisdom and power of the Gohonzon, right? That could also, you could also say, you and your Ichinen. And then Gyo is the action you need to take to achieve the aim. And E is the contacts or people you need to know, status it's usually called, which you need to establish in your life to get to that aim. So Nichiren Daishonin's teaching is, uh, so far as the last two, Gyo and E, don't worry about them. Gyo, don't worry. E, don't worry. That's how to get there and who you should know to get there. What matters, Nichiren Daishonin said, is Kyo and Chi. Your Ichinen focused on your aim. Right? So in other words, you chant nam myoho kyo expressing your prayers or wish, that ultimate aim, with your whole life, with your whole Ichinen. Hmm? And that is what matters. Through having an open, as it were, connection between that ultimate aim, or as I sometimes call it, golden vision, and uh, you and your Gohonzon, how to get there will be the job of nam myoho renge In other words, how to get there will arise from your Buddha wisdom. And quite naturally, you'll find yourself taking the right steps to lead you there. Often, quite unconsciously, sometimes consciously, often unconsciously. You'll do this or that. You'll decide to ring this person suddenly on an inspiration and you do so. And something comes from that and so on. So, uh, in other words, our concern is that we keep in our Ichinen that ultimate aim or golden vision that we want to achieve. Then, the Buddha state can work freely and show us how to get there as well as who to know to get there. Do you follow? So thinking, 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 trying to work it out in our heads, since we don't know the future, will never work. Thinking, too much thinking blocks wisdom. But of course, uh, we can't help thinking. We have to think sometimes. But 
when it comes to that sort of goal, which is something in the future, where you have no or very few facts to base your hopes on winning through to it, nothing is necessary in terms of thinking. You get there through activating the wisdom of the gods and, and making sure there's no blockage between your mind and your itchinen and the gods and, and that your daimoku has a free run, not cluttered up by a whole lot of thinking. Okay, so that relates very much to itchinen sansen. In other words, it's the power of that principle of itchinen sansen at work which enables you to achieve your aim uh, without having to worry about how actually to get there. In other words, I suppose you could say to sum it up, you just give the thing to the gods and, and chant Nam Myorengikyo. Never allowing it, though, to slip out of your itchnin. So, in the fourth prayer of Gongyo, you have the opportunity to express your personal prayers, right? So, speaking personally anyway, where I have established a determination or a target, I, to, to lodge it firmly in my itchnin or in my heart, I try to remember it, sort of to verbalize it in a way, but to remember it in your mind in that fourth prayer. Every day in morning gongya. Is that thing in my itchnin still? No, it isn't. You know, pull it back into your heart, into the center of your life, in that fourth prayer. And then gradually, if you do that consistently, as it were, forcing it back into your itchin in each day, after about a week or two of doing that each morning, it'll be bare and nothing will shake it. All right, everyone. I'm really sorry we can't answer more questions, but I do promise you that it'll take time because each division, we're keeping all the questions that were raised by every member. And as there were nearly 300 people on most courses. We're going to have an awful lot of questions, but it's going to be a great guide for us uh, to make decisions about what sort of articles to put into the UK Express, into the bulletin, what sort of points should come out and be explained during chapter study and so on. So uh, every one of your questions is going to be important. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.